Hello and welcome to today's screencast focuses on Craig and Lockhart uh, levels of processing model. Uh, now before we go into this approach to memory, uh, it's really important we have a recap on uh, the multi-store model of memory. Uh, so the multi-store model of memory then uh, basically said that we have three stores and with which our information passes through. Uh, so we had a look at the short-term sensory store, we had a look at this idea that when information, unlimited information comes in for a, a period of up to one second, we then use selective attention to filter in the relevant information to the short-term memory and then we filter out the irrelevant information. Once we have information in our short-term memory, um, we can take in the filtered information, looking at somewhere between five and 90 pieces of information, and that will last for 30 seconds. At that point, if we rehearse the information, practice it, we can then encode it into our long-term memory. And when we stored it in our long-term memories motor programs, we can then recognize and retrieve this information to our short-term memory to perform skills um, if we need to. So that was our basic understanding of multi-store model of memory. Now, if I said to you at this point, okay, the reason why I'm putting this here is that usually when an approach, a theory, a model, uh, is generated in psychology. It's usually due to the shortcomings of another theory, model, or concept. So in this case, we had a look, if you remember, we had a look at some disadvantages or weaknesses of the multi-store model of memory. Now, particularly, uh, we had a look at the top two. We said that it was too simplistic, it hadn't been proven by empirical studies. Secondly, it said it doesn't explain why some information is repeated or rehearsed, but it's forgotten. The key thing for today is that one of the disadvantages or weaknesses of the multi-store model of memory is it doesn't explain how depth of processing affects long-term memory storage. And this is where Craig and Lockhart picked up. So what they were interested in, they weren't interested in how we store, or the focus of their model was not about how we store information in order to remember it, which is what the focus of the multi-store model was. Uh, memory was. They were more interested in what we do with information to ensure we store it in our long-term memory. Okay, so it's not how we store it, but what we do with the information. Um, so specifically, uh, I'll put those two things on here. It focuses, this levels of processing model is going to focus on what we do with information, uh, in particular, not how we store information. So let me go into this and show you exactly what I mean about the levels of processing model. Okay, so levels of processing model basically says that the more that you process information, the more that information is going to be stored in the long-term memory. And in order to, to show this and depict this, they used a model, okay, and this is an adapted version of Craig and Lockhart's model. Uh, they basically said that when we have information, we can take, we can process it in three ways. There are two shallow ways we can process information, and there is one deep way we can process information. Now, the two shallow ways we can uh, process information and it's structural and phonetic. So structural basically refers to what information looks like. Okay, so when we see something, okay, what it looks like. And this is considered a shallow way of processing information. Phonetic, those people who've studied English will know about the phonetic alphabet, an alphabet on what words sound like. So phonetic basically refers to what information sounds like. Finally, we go down to semantic, which is considered a deep way to focus, uh, to process information. And this basically refers to what information means. Okay, so information means, if you just change that bit there, so to means rather than meaning. So if we understand the meaning of information, it's more likely we will process that information deeply. And if we process the information deeply, it's more likely this information will be stored in our long-term memory. So hopefully that makes sense. So we'll have a little look on it. So you imagine now um, in terms of, I don't know, you could pick absolutely any skill um, you want to. Okay, so any skill. So for example, if a coach shows you how to perform a skill, that would be someone using structural processing. If they tell you how to perform a skill, this would be phonetic processing. If they show and tell you how to perform a skill, but they add on a reason why it's important to do that skill, that would give the skill some meaning, which would mean it's semantic. So if you can focus on semantic processing, there's more chance information will be stored in the long-term memory. So if these are our key definitions are of the key um, levels of processing, what we need to do then is have a look at how we apply these three levels to the to, to process it, okay, and how it impacts our long-term memory. So let's have a look at this in action then. First things first. So structural and phonetic then are shallow levels of processing. 
because they don't involve much processing. To hear something or to see something doesn't require a high level of processing. Okay, therefore, less information is stored in the long term memory. Where if we flip this over and have a look at semantic uh, as a level of processing, this is a deep level of processing. Okay, so what this means is it involves high levels of processing. As a result of it involving high levels of processing, this will mean in more information can be stored in the long term memory for longer. Okay, so that is the key reason behind semantic processing being so important. So I guess if we look at this from a coaching point of view, if you're just telling someone something or you're showing some, someone something and you're not explaining why you're asking them to do it or what the benefits of it could be, it's really difficult for people to store this in the long term memory over a long period of time. Okay, so that is something to consider there. So once we've got that then, if I just sum up this whole slide, when we talk about this, when you first ever see something on Craig and Lockhart's levels of processing model, okay, you need to think about the levels of processing that will allow the most uh, or the most efficient long-term memory storage. So the deeper the level of processing will involve more processing. Therefore, this means that more of that information can be stored in the long-term memory. So to sum that up, the deeper the information is processed, the greater the long-term memory storage. So that's a way we could just finish off this slide to say that is a summary of how we have to interpret that model. So if you get an exam question, this, this uh, model actually is taken from an exam question, you would need to be able to identify the three levels of processing and then describe them. Okay. Once you've described them, you'd have to, I suppose, apply why they are shallow okay so you've got to say it because and then you've got to say so okay linked to long-term memory storage so pretty much explaining and applying everything on this model same with semantic here as you can see onto there so if we go on to here then um, our next slide Craig and Lockhart's self processing model just to put our strap line up on the top of here so as we all know we have got same thing as I said on today, the deeper the information is processed, the greater the long-term memory storage. So what is absolutely vital now then is if we're saying deep processing is really important for long-term memory storage, what are the factors that would kind of link to deep processing? It's all very well saying that we've looked at the three levels of processing and we've kind of summarized that the deeper we process information, the more the information will process, therefore more information will be stored in long-term memory. So what factors align with deep processing? And we have to consider three things really. So if I just put this in, the deeper we consider information, understand information, and can apply meaning to information, if these three factors align the more efficient long-term memory storage will be. So to you know, ultimately to sum up what we've said about the levels of processing, we know there's three. We know semantic is the deepest because it involves more processing. Uh, therefore, more information will be stored in the long-term memory. Then if we consider the factors that align to deep processing, these are really, really important here. And I think it's just useful to use, keep using this word deep, the deeper we consider understand and apply meaning to information, the more efficient that long-term memory storage will be. Now, after this, just to give you a little bit of an idea of this, let's consider um, this idea of a sports skill. So we'll use an application to example now. So I'm going to give you this example here, which is a somersault in gymnastics. Okay, so let me say for this, I'm just going to go through here and say, right, if you, we wanted a gymnast to process their understanding of a somersault deeply, it's really important that a gymnastics coach doesn't just tell them to get into a tuck position when they're doing a somersault, or a gymnastics coach doesn't just show them a tuck position in a somersault. If they want the, the individual to process this information deeply, they would need to explain why a tuck position is so important. And in this case, they would be able to explain a tuck position ensures a greater speed of rotation in a somersault, which will lead to a more efficient execution of that skill. Now, as soon as that happens, it means the gymnast is more likely to consider, understand and apply meaning to why they have to assume a tuck position and therefore they're more likely to store it in the long term memory. So hopefully you can see how that would work um, in terms of the uh, Craig and Lockhart's levels of processing model. So ultimately, as a recap from there, we're considering there are three levels. OK, two are shallow, one is deep. OK, the deeper we process 
the more we process, therefore, the more information is stored in our long-term memory. Now, what we now need to be able to do is to understand three factors that align to deep processing, which are consideration, understanding, and meaning. And then we need to consider um, a sporting example alongside that. Okay, so please make good notes on this.